My name is Kristen Prinz. I'm the founder and managing partner of the Prinz Law Firm, and the company uh, focuses on employment law. The best business advice I've been given is put your people first. Uh, the team members that you have working with you, they represent your firm, they represent our business, and so if they feel good about what they're doing, they'll provide the best service to our clients. Putting values first, I mean, we really, and I think it is because I'm very focused on my team and having a great culture, especially for what we do. We're advising other businesses or senior executives on employment law issues. So for us to embody all of that and show what it is to really have a great culture, I think that is the most important part of what differentiates us from our competition. I started my business 10 years ago because I was working at a place where I felt our values weren't aligned. Uh, actually, a leader in that firm, I asked him once why we didn't treat the support staff a little bit better, why they didn't invest a little bit more in the support staff. And he told me that employees are like rolls of toilet paper. You use one up and you get another one. So that's why I started. And I thought, oh, I could do this so much better. I think you have to be a little bit naive to start a business because of course you're looking at other people and saying I could do this so much better. Now looking back, I think it's the best decision I ever made. But uh, at the time I just was pretty fearless about it. And maybe now today I would be a little bit more cautious. Yes, I do think that uh, being more cautious is a detriment to a business owner. When you're making fear-based decisions, they're usually bad decisions. I generally say that. And uh, being more cautious is usually, you know, there's uh, obviously you want to take calculated risk. You don't want to be, you know, throwing your entire future down the drain based on one. I'm not betting everything on black or anything like that. I'm, I'm taking calculated risks, but I think you have to do that to have a successful business. Human capital is definitely our biggest resource. I mean, we, are really providing advice and counsel to our clients. And so I need to make sure that the people on my staff can do that in a way that instills confidence in our clients. Uh, so how we hire, the way we hire that I think is different is that we do go through a pretty rigorous process. Uh, we have a screening device, so people have to take a, essentially a personality test. Um, and then we have an outside consultant who will review the responses and give us some indication about whether the candidate is going to be right for the specific role. And then we have that person, once they've done that, we have them interview with pretty much everyone on the team. Now, we have a small team of 10 people, so it's a little bit easier, but I think if you're hiring into a department and you have a small team, you want this person to interview everybody so that you, you both know that it's a good culture fit. I see technology as both a challenge and a benefit to our company. I see it as a challenge because it's not our area of expertise. We, uh, you know, there's a lot of misinformation about what works best. Of course, there's a lot of marketing constantly about what technology you should be using. At the same time, technology has allowed us to be more agile. It's allowed us to be more efficient with the work that we do. I mean, years ago, when I started, I met with every single client face to face. Um, there are, I would say, almost the majority of clients these days we don't meet with face to face because we have so much access to technology. My name is Marty Constant. I am a workplace futurist and founder of Constant Change. I research, write, and train on the topic of agility. I wrote a best-selling book on the topic called Activate Your Agile Career and developed an entire set of principles and coursework around that. There's probably two challenges that I have experienced. One of them is working things on the side while you've got a full-time job. 
As I mentioned, I researched this book and wrote it over a period of six years. So doing that, it was like having another business on the side. That was probably one of the most challenging things is jockeying all of that. But even more challenging than that is when I went from being a marketing executive. I had been a designer. I had been an executive. I had been everything marketing for technology companies. And I made the switch, the intentional switch during that six year time period to get into the career development and training space. So the most difficult thing that I've had to do is really rebrand myself and reposition myself. I had to build an entire new ecosystem of people, of coaches and people in HR, people who buy training services in the leadership and development space. So I really had to do a bit of reinvention. So doing that and building that and creating all of the content for that was probably the most difficult thing I've ever done, jumping from one career to the other. My top three challenges, uh, saying no to the things that are not on strategy, probably the most difficult thing. And the other thing is wearing a lot of hats I work with a virtual team. I can't do it alone. One of my philosophies is no one can do it alone. You have to surround yourself with really talented people. So, but owning the business and being the founder of this company, I have to be responsible for that. So really the challenges there are working with different people, working with freelancers. I used to work in a corporation and companies would meet my schedules in a way that was satisfactory to my bosses. Now, when you're working as a newer company and establishing new relationships, it's a little bit harder to demand the same type of schedule delivery that you did as an emerging growth stage company that was acquired by a Fortune 100 company. The best business advice, there's a, a few of them. One of them is, being true to who you are. This took me a while in my career. You hear it all the time, authentic, be authentic. A Little bit harder to do. There was a session that I saw recently on Oprah. She did not sign on for 60 minutes because they kept on wanting her to be more factual and be more serious in her interviews. Even to the point where she said her name Oprah Winfrey and the response to her coaches was it was too emotional of a response. So her brand is all about emotion and being authentic. So she declined that opportunity to be with 60 Minutes. I thought that was a great example. So being authentic to yourself, and I think finding your voice uh, and really finding your own brand about what makes sense to you and being consistent with that. That, that was a real hard, you know, uh, really good advice um, that I've gotten. And the other bit of advice I got a long time ago and it still holds true today, it is make your boss look good. Make your client look good. It's not about you. It is about how people feel when they're around you. It is about making them successful. If you make them successful, there's all kinds of joy and satisfaction in that. And your career just absolutely takes care of itself.